Hello everyone, welcome to this series on how to build your very own Linux distribution absolutely from scratch. So, uh, last video we've downloaded, configured and compiled Linux kernel. Also, we tried to boot it, but since there was no uh, root file system, we sort of panicked because it could have mounted one. So, uh, in this video, uh, we'll deal with this properly. So, uh, this video in particular, we will download, configure, compile uh, BusyBox, and then we'll create a rudimentary root file system and provide the very simple, like the bare minimum in its script to run uh, our system. And hopefully, by the end of this video, we'll see the shell. Uh, after the Linux kernel actually boots. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to the Linux directory that we've created uh, previously in the previous video. And here uh, I will now download the BusyBox. So I can simply say widget and HTTPS um, and busybox.net slash downloads slash and the version I'm using is busybox dash 1.36.1 uh, dot tar dot bz2 Okay, so here we have the busybox 1.36.1.tarbz2. So the next thing is to uh, extract the files from there. So I can use star minus x uh, vf, what, but I need to add one more uh, letter here. So j, because we're not dealing with the dot gz uh, files, but uh, the bz, so j uh, gives us an option to deal with those files as well. And uh, I want to um, like extract this to the busybox directory that is about to be created. Uh, so busybox, um, yes, like this. And now we have the busybox folder. Yeah, great. So I cd to the busybox folder. And here, again, uh, absolutely similar story. So we don't yet have the config file right so uh and if we do make help just like with the kernel it gives us an idea of what we can do here so we'll start by uh making the def config so just like previously we did uh and again uh you can either use the uh existing configuration for busybox that i have provided uh, under the monkey to monkey to Linux distribution. But in this particular case, uh, we can actually do the, do things manually because with Busybox, Busybox it's not uh, as critical as with kernel. So if I just say uh, the config, right? So here are uh, the first and the most essential thing to change. So we want to make sure that the results in binary is going to be static. Okay, so what's wrong with... Okay, this uh, config static uh, is not set. Yeah, so here config static should be equal to yes. And another thing, another thing, uh, if I just search for widget, so widget is the utility that allows you to download files from internet. But the downside, the big downside of having the static link system, which monkey see monkey do is, is actually uh, uh, like uh, link, the way it's linked, it's static link, uh, and it has the static, static link busy box. So the downside of this is that the standard widget is not going to work with this uh, because of the libnss underscore DNS library, which is um, uh, like, uh, yeah, so needed in order to make this HTTP uh, request. So uh, there would be a workaround, there would be a separate video on creating an alternative uh, utility and, and a utility alternative to widget. But for now, we just uh, disable this. Uh, so from a 999, yeah, to uh, from 999 to 1006. Want to substitute the beginning uh, of the line with uh, hash like this, and 
those so nine 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 so zero six substitute the equals to yes I need to escape equals I believe yes with uh, is not set great so um, with this configuration done uh, we can actually already compile it so yeah again ju just to give you an idea so this uh, busyback is not going to have the widget but yeah when it comes to uh, like the Actual functionality will uh, create the utility with a custom DNS resolver because uh, that would be working assuming the static and link system, which is quite cool. Anyway, for now, I just want to write and quit. And now we are ready to compile uh, Busybox. I can simply say make and uh, again minus J to specify the number of jobs uh, returned by the executed and proxy literally the number of cores you use in my case there's only two cores i'm not going to use this because otherwise uh, uh my video recording would just simply hand so i just skip it like this and i would also now pause uh the video recording because uh yeah, it might ask me a couple of questions yeah probably not i will now pause the video recording because otherwise the compilation would last forever and i'll get back to you once the compilation is done Okay, we are done. This is happening much faster as opposed to Linux kernel compilation. Now we need to uh, install our compile busybox. So in order to do this, I can say make and then uh, config prefix. And it equals to, I want to install the current working directory slash uh, create a directory called busybox uppercase and install, okay? And now uh, this should copy all the files, all the relevant files to the folder called busybox uh, uppercase. Uh, I don't yet see this, so let me just see. It actually is there, yeah, it is there. So let's cd to the busybox. And here already, you see like this already looks like our root file system at some point. So um, if we go to, oh, let's just list the bin folder. And we have uh, the busybox. Uh, well, these are not the uh, utilities. These are just the sim links, essentially, because busybox is a single binary, remember? Uh, but anyway, uh, so it also can uh, list the has been, okay? And also you can list the user, also has been and has been. Well, so that's the structure. Now we can already use this uh, uppercase busybox folder, uh, just. Uh, going like this, just going one level up. Uh, yeah, so we are now in the working directory. So we'll now create a root folder out of the busybox folder. So I can say cp and busybox, uh, no, cp busybox, and then the uppercase busybox. And here I just want to call this folder root. Okay, omitting busybox. What? Ah, oh, uh, minus r is not specified. I'm sorry. Obviously, recursively copy. Now we have the root. Yes, we do. CD into the root. Okay, so uh, the first thing to do, we want to remove the Linux RC file. We don't need that file because uh, we are using init RAMFS. We're supposed to be using init RAMFS instead of init RD. So Linux RC is needed for init RD, hence we don't need it, hence we can delete it. And now we'll create uh, the init script the very first file to be called by the linux kernel so i can simply say vichy and init so um let's start from the shebang and i just say bin shell not bin bash because bash is not installed and this is already the file that is supposed to be uh, executing uh, under the new system that we're creating so only busybox ash is available there so uh, the first thing we want to do uh, is probably to suppress the kernel messages, kernel messages. And to do so, we can simply see, say d message minus n1. And I also want to clear the screen uh, from whatever was there so far. Then we need to uh, mount uh, file systems, uh, like it's better to say virtual file system. Systems. So these are used by the Linux kernel itself. So I can simply say mount minus t dev t 
temp fs dev temp fs and none and mount this to dev we don't yet have the dev folder we'll create this uh also want to mount minus t proc uh to uh the proc and finally mount ccfs ccfs to sys uh, so I will show the contents of the dev, the proc, and the sys folders when we boot. So that would be selfless explanatory work. In particular, do we need to add these? Because otherwise, like, you know, uh, it would not see the network devices. It would not see uh, like a hard drive. It would not see literally anything. That, like dev tempfs is a new way to populate the devices, actually. You, uh, earlier, uh, we could have used like things, uh, utilities like udev, for instance. Sometimes it's better if you want the help block support, but now we're just uh, not using that for now. Well, not supposed to be using this. Uh, but anyway, so uh, finally we want to start the shell and I'm going to be using CTTY hack and uh, run the shell. We can probably also execute it. So uh, this is not going to support things like uh, reboot, power off, and all the stuff. For that, for the sake, we will need to provide more configurations. But just for booting the system, this should be fairly enough. Uh, two more things to do. So the first is to create the dev proc and sys folders, and the second is to make the init executable. For otherwise, it's not going to be loaded. So ch mod a plus x make it executable init. Okay, so now in it should be indeed executable. Uh, and uh, also wants to make a dir and I'll make the def, the proc, and the sys. Okay, yeah, now our file system, root file system, should actually be completed and we are ready to uh, pack it as the root.cpio.gz uh, compress file. And to do so, we can use the command find all and then pipe the output of that command to cpio minus o minus h new c and pipe this to gzip. And then I want to redirect the output of the gzip to, well, uh, I could have just re redirected here to root.cpio.gz. But we can actually already install it to the uh, under the ISO boot. So I want to go one level up and then go into the ISO folder, then go into the boot folder, and then uh, make this CPAO GZ uh, settle up there. So 5,175 uh, blocks. So let's check. Uh, if we did actually put this into the proper place, so cd into the ISO, so now here, correct, go into boot, and yeah, root cpio.gz, so this is uh, exactly what we're supposed to be uh, having here, so this is good, and now let's uh, run, uh, again, we want to create the new ISO, so I just want to uh, remove the old ISO file and now I say grub uh, mk rescue minus o msmd linux dot iso and use the newly updated ISO folder. So hold my breath, hopefully everything is done properly. Now I can try luck by same Q, uh, QMU system x8664. Want to run this in the terminal, hence no graphic. Uh, use cursors instead of SDL to render everything to screen. CZ ROM, uh, multi C monkey do Linux ISO, and memory, give it one gig. Well, uh, it's really handy to actually provide the scripts like to run, uh, to make the root system, and in the within the monkey C monkey do repository, uh, I actually have all those automated scripts, so feel free to reference those. But for now, I just run things as is. 
and let's see if it sort of works. So if I did everything properly, uh, well, it says the wrong U uh, EFI signature, but it doesn't matter. Uh, this still going to work. So if I did everything properly, it now should put into the shell. And indeed, yes, it runs into the shell. Well, for some reason, it says they can't, uh, cannot access the CTY, although the uh, CTTY hack was actually used. I probably should have done exact, but anyway, uh, we're going to last here. So here is the root file system. Again, we see what is with the bin folder and so on. Uh, and we can see whatever is going on within our init, for instance. So for now, I just want to demonstrate the content of the dev uh, folder. Well, actually, the list of available devices here, which is quite important, as well as the proc. Okay, so this is what we have within the proc, and also what we have under the sys. Okay, so let's say sys class, uh, and here. Um, net and we have the interfaces there uh, like network interfaces uh, available on the system you can also list them via if config but for now for now they are not listed because they all are turned off so uh, if config minus a to list all the available ones so uh, we'll also need, so when, when it comes to setting up the networking uh, we'll use the UDHCP uh, to uh, populate uh, these devices with the proper IP addresses, uh, masks, uh, uh, create the routes, and uh, just uh, generally turn these devices on so that we could then use run the ping command to uh, prove that the network is actually working. But for now, uh, this is uh, kind of enough. And again, like starting from the next video, uh, we'll fix... Uh, uh, all the existing issues and will make the handling of the uh, events like power off or reboot because if you now just try to reboot nothing happens if you can't try to power off nothing happens if you try to exit kind of would simply panic because well not yet but if you exit again and again and again yeah one day you will panic because uh i have attempted to kill in it which is the pid one and you remember the pid one is special in linux because um, that's the first uh, like uh, program, the first binary or the shell script to be called the Linux kernel. If you kill it, the kernel simply panics. So in order to get to, to deal with this sort of a behavior, we can rely on the built-in busybox uh, in it, uh, which lives within the S, under the SBIN folder. And that would help us to automatically handle all the scenarios. So uh, after that is done, uh, we would be able to normally escape, uh, like uh, exit would uh, result in uh, running the shell one more time. So we would not be able to escape uh, from the shell, to exit from the shell. And if you reboot, this would reboot. If you power off, it would power off. So hopefully that makes sense. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.